Hi, sisters of the 41st Ward and brothers, if any of you are watching. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Megan Gallagher, and I live in 667, and I have been called um, to be a Relief Society teacher. So today, I'm going to talk about and discuss the talk, Spiritually Defining Memories. Uh, it was given by Neil L. Anderson of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles back in April for the most recent conference, and I believe it was the Saturday morning session that it was given. I was really inspired by this talk, and it is it is a longer talk. It's about 16 and a half minutes, but something I thought about before watching this talk was I find it so easy to sit down and watch a half hour of TV. Why is it harder to motivate myself to watch a conference talk? And listening to it and pondering on it for the past day or so has really blessed me, so I hope you all have a chance to listen to this talk as well, whether it be today or some other point in the future. I found that this talk really brought a message of hope and reminded me of a lot of really important and life-changing moments in my own life. I think it's been really hard for me this week to be in Provo simply because I'm from Minnesota and for those of you who have kept up with the news you know that Minnesota specifically Minneapolis is in quite a lot of turmoil right now um, and I know that I know that many families have been affected by this and I, I feel very blessed that my family is safe right now but this talk just reminded me that even during hard times, we can see light through our Savior, Jesus Christ. So one of the first things that Elder Anderson talks about is spiritually defining moments and memories that we can have and recognize throughout our life. So I want to share a quote from the beginning of his talk. He talks about the prophet Joseph Smith and his example to us, and that was a theme throughout this conference, was Joseph Smith and the restoration and how we hear him, especially now in these latter days. The quote goes, There is a lesson for us in the prophet Joseph, the prophet Joseph Smith's example. Along with the peaceful direction we receive from the Holy Ghost from time to time, God powerfully... God powerfully and very personally assures each of us that he knows us and he loves us. He can bless us specifically and openly. And Elder Anderson continues to go on to talk about four spiritually defining moments and memories from his life, from the prophet's life, and from two examples, one in France and one in Brazil. So I thought it would be cool to share with you just two spiritually defining memories of my own. I want to start with a small spiritually defining moment, and this was a couple weeks ago um, before the chaos in Minneapolis had started, but I was feeling really homesick one weekend and just realizing that I won't see my family until September, which feels like a long way away, and I really wanted to watch this movie um, called Soul Surfer, and Soul Surfer is about... Uh, surfer named um, Bethany Hamilton and she um, gets attacked by a shark at the young age of 13 and her arm is completely torn off and as a surfer and as a person she has to learn how to adapt and trust in God and I really felt impressed to invite my good friend Lindsay Flake over for this movie and for those of you know for those of you excuse me who know Lindsay you know how incredibly kind she is and how big her heart is. And it was a Sunday night and I, I just was feeling so alone. And to have her there and watch this movie with me, I don't think even she real, realizes how much that meant to me. And I felt like I really connected with her over that message and that hope. So that's one moment 
um, involving another person specifically, that was a spiritually defining moment for me. The second one I want to share with you is about when I was invited to be baptized into the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. It was a Monday. It was Monday, August 1st, 2016. I was 19 years old. I was about to go into my sophomore year of college at a school in Minnesota. And I was at my good friend Jeanette's house. And Jeanette was actually my escort when I went through the temple in March. But anyways, I was at her house and she was there. One of her sons was there. My boyfriend at the time was there. And my sister was there along with the two elders who were teaching me. And they told me about the plan of salvation and they told me about God's plan for me. And not only God's plan for me, they were telling me about God's plan for everyone. And it brought so much hope to me. And it brought me to tears because I was sitting, in across, sitting across from my little sister who was baptized into the church a year and a half prior when she was only 14, which happened to be the same age Joseph Smith was during the first vision, from what I understand. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure he was 14. Anyways, with that being said, I was so overcome with the Spirit in a way that I hadn't ever been before. And they asked me, I believe they said, Sister Gallagher, do you want to follow the example of Christ and go into the waters of baptism and become a member of the church? I don't know if that was the exact wording, but that's what I remember. And it felt like a lightning bolt went through my heart. And in that moment, I knew everything I had read, everything I had prayed about, everything I had learned up until that point was true. And I said yes. And that was one of the most important days of my life, personally, was accepting that invitation. And with that being said, as I share my spiritual memories, I just encourage you all, anyone who's listening, to... Think about spiritual moments and memories in your own life. Think about a time where you have consciously recognized that Heavenly Father knows you and loves you. And if you feel that you haven't had a time like this, I want to share another quote with you. This quote was quoted by Elder Anderson in the talk, so I guess you could say I'm double quoting because I'm quoting Elder Anderson, quoting President Oaks. But President Oaks once said, Perhaps your prayers have been answered again and again, but you have had your expectations fixed on a sign so grand or a voice so loud that you think you have had no answer. Brothers and sisters, I want to testify to you that I know small signs, like Lindsay coming over for a movie, or something as simple as my roommate buying me a cookie. That happened last week. Thank you, Joanna. Things as simple as that show us not only other people's love for us, but Heavenly Father's love for us through those people. I just want to end this message by testifying that I know miracles have not ceased. I know that throughout these very dark and difficult times, I believe the gospel can shine even brighter, and I believe that we can take care of each other and love each other like Jesus did. I would encourage you all to listen to this talk and also pray for ways that you can recognize Heavenly Father's love in your life. And for those of you who feel like you haven't felt the Spirit or haven't connected with Heavenly Father in a long time, it just takes baby steps. It really does. I, I think for a long time I thought it was going to always be these big lightning bolt moments. And those do happen, but really it starts with those baby steps. I love you all so much. I am honored to be your sister in Christ. I'm honored to be part of this ward, and I say all of these things in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ.